Hello everyone. This is part three of the Schedule Pro tutorial video series that covers the example presented in Chapter 4 of the Schedule Pro manual. Please make sure to watch parts one and two before watching this video. Furthermore, remember to visit our website at www.intelligen.com where you can download an evaluation version of Schedule Pro. Let's now continue the tutorial where we left off. As you may remember, in parts 1 and 2, I showed you how to create a simple recipe from scratch. Furthermore, part 2 concluded after scheduling a campaign for this recipe. In this video, I will show you how to view the results of this schedule, along with other features. As I mentioned in the previous video, after you schedule a campaign, its batches will be displayed in the bottom half of the production schedule window. In addition to this, under the production schedule branch of the project tree, Scheduling information for every campaign, batch, procedure, and operation is hierarchically displayed. Each batch is identified by a unique name, which is a combination of the associated campaign name and an integer ID. Furthermore, scheduling results can be visualized in graphs accessed through the main toolbar. For instance, the equipment occupancy chart can be brought up by pressing this button in this graph, you can see equipment utilization as a function of time. Notice that the legend on the right designates batches by distinct color. In this case, there are four different colors for the four batches defined in this campaign. As you can see in this graph, a batch begins with the different operations in the mixing tank, MT1. The batch then continues on into the storage tank and the filler. You can also see the utilization of the CIP skid, which is used during cleaning operations. Notice that the first yellow bar for CIP skid utilization corresponds to the cleaning of the mixing tank, MT1. Therefore, it has the same start time and duration as the cleaning operation in MT1. The second yellow bar on the CIP skid line corresponds to the simultaneous cleaning of the filler and the storage tank. Notice that this same pattern is also displayed for the other batches in this campaign. Furthermore, the equipment occupancy chart is useful in identifying bottleneck equipment. In this example, you can see that the storage tank, ST101, is the overall bottleneck since it has the longest cycle time and there is no slack time between batches. Note that the style of this chart is customizable and can be modified by right-clicking on it in an open area and selecting Edit Style. From this dialog, we can change various aspects of the appearance of the chart. In addition, if you would like to change the color used for a particular batch, you can simply double-click the name of the batch in the chart legend, and then pick a different color from the color palette that pops up. Another way to visualize results is by generating an Operations Gantt chart. This chart can be generated by pressing on the Gantt chart button of the main toolbar. The graph can be displayed at various levels of detail. The green bar represents the full campaign that was scheduled. The light brown bars represent the four different batches within that campaign. The dark blue bars represent the procedures within each of the batches and the light blue bars represent the operations within each procedure. As you can see, all scheduled activities are shown both in a hierarchical tree on the left-hand side, as well as in a bar graph on the right-hand side. Furthermore, this chart can be exported into Microsoft Project. Schedule Pro also generates an equipment utilization chart, which helps us to visualize the percent time utilization of each equipment item during the campaign. We can bring up this chart by selecting View from the main menu bar and then selecting the Equipment Time Utilization option. In this graph, you can see that the storage tank, ST101, which has the highest time utilization, is identified as the most likely bottleneck. Schedule Pro can also be used for debottlenecking and seeing the impact of having multiple pieces of equipment that can carry out the same procedure. As I just mentioned, through the time utilization graph, the bottleneck equipment in this example is the storage tank, although the filler is also very highly utilized. Furthermore, let's have a look at the cycle time of our batches.
As you can see, the estimated minimum cycle time for the batches is roughly seven and a half hours. This means that we can start a new batch every seven and a half hours. One way to potentially reduce this cycle time is to add more equipment which may run in staggered mode. This concept is modeled using SchedulePro's equipment pool functionality. To view the impact of having a pool of equipment, let's first unschedule the campaign and then add an extra storage tank and filler. As you may recall, equipment can be added through the Facilities node of the project tree. Let's go ahead and add a new storage tank, which we will call ST102. Let's add a second filler as well, called Filler2. Next, we need to make the equipment available for procedures 2 and 3, which were associated with storage and filling. We can do that by selecting the procedures and double-clicking. Through the Main Equipment Pool tab, we can now add the new piece of equipment. Let's do the same for the fill procedure. With these changes completed, we can now reschedule the campaign. And once again, we can bring up the equipment occupancy chart to view the results. As you can see through this chart, the storage tank is no longer the bottleneck equipment. Instead, the bottleneck has shifted to the mixing tank, MT1. Furthermore, if we look at the cycle time, we can see that it has been reduced from the original 7.6 hour cycle time all the way down to 4 hours. In other words, adding the second storage tank and the second filler allowed us to almost double our production rate. Now let's take a look at how SchedulePro handles campaigns of different products. Let's assume that in addition to our 1 liter bag recipe, we have a similar recipe for producing 1 half liter bags of saline solution containing API. The simplest way to define this recipe is to simply select the recipes node of the project tree, then select the 1 liter bag recipe, and finally click the copy and paste buttons. As you can see, we now have a copy of our original recipe. If we select it and press the edit recipe button, we can change the name to 0.5 liter bag recipe. Let's change the color that will be displayed for this recipe in the production schedule as well. To do this, I will select the paint bucket icon and then select a different color. Let's also assume that the total number of bags produced in a batch of this recipe is 10,000, which is the same number of bags as our 1 liter bag recipe. Therefore, since each bag is one half liter, on the size tab, we need to specify a batch of 5,000 liters. Let's click OK to close this dialog box now. Now let's make a small modification to this recipe in order to differentiate it from the first recipe. To do this, first open the 0.5 liter bag recipe in the project tree. Then select the P3 fill procedure. Next, select the Fill Bags operation and click the Edit Operation button. Click the Duration tab so that we can change the duration of this operation. Recall that we previously specified a duration based upon a flow rate of entities. Currently the duration is calculated by SchedulePro to be 5.56 hours. If we click the Setup button, we can see our original specifications. As stated previously, the 0.5 liter bag recipe produces the same number of bags as the 1 liter bag recipe. As a result, we will keep the 10,000 entities entry here. Furthermore, let's assume that the flow rate of solution into the filler stays the same in our new recipe as it was in the 1 liter bag recipe. By keeping the same processing rate of 30 liters per minute, we can therefore produce 60 entities per minute of 0.5 liter bags. As a result, we need to change the flow rate here to 60 entities per minute. Let's click OK to exit this dialog. Note that the calculated duration for this operation has now been decreased by 50%. Let's click OK again to save our changes. Now let's add a campaign of 0.5 liter bags to our production schedule. 
To do this, first click the Production Schedule node of the project tree. Then click the Add New Campaign button of the Campaign Sequence table. Now we can select our new 0.5 liter bag recipe from the recipe drop-down list. In addition, let's change the display color to the blue color that we specified previously by clicking the Set from Recipe button. Let's also change the number of batches to 2, and then exit this dialog box. As you can see, we now have a second campaign in our campaign sequence. However, we do not have specific batches scheduled for this campaign yet. To schedule these batches, we can click the Schedule All Campaigns button in the top menu bar. As you can see, the new batches are now scheduled. Note that the 0.5 liter bag batches are shorter than the 1 liter bag batches because we reduced the duration of the filling operation for the 0.5 liter bag recipe. Now let's click the Equipment Occupancy Chart button in order to view our new schedule. Let's also change the style of this chart by right-clicking an open area and clicking Edit Style. Under the Bar Color options, choose Color by Campaign. Then click OK. This allows us to easily see which bars on the chart are associated with each campaign. The green bars are all associated with the 1 liter bag campaign, and the blue bars are all associated with the 1 half liter bag campaign. It is clear that the two 1 half liter batches are processed at the end of this schedule, after the equipment is no longer needed for the 1 liter batches. You might notice that there are large gaps between the end of the last batch in the 1 liter bag campaign and the beginning of the first batch of the 1 half liter bag campaign for all equipment items except the CIP skid. This is the case because currently all operations are rigidly scheduled. However, it is possible to add flexible time shifts to various operations in Schedule Pro. This allows the software to determine better solutions by shifting certain operations ahead or behind in the schedule. As a result, gaps in equipment usage can be reduced. For instance, currently the start of the first batch of the 1 half liter bag recipe has been delayed. If I try to manually shift the batch start time so that the first 1 half liter bag batch begins shortly after the end of the last 1 liter bag batch, you can see that I generate a conflict for the CIP skid. This conflict is shown by the addition of a conflict line under the CIP skid 1 line. The conflict operation itself is outlined in red here. As you can see, there is an overlap between the first cleaning operation in the first 1 half liter bag batch and the last cleaning operation in the last 1 liter bag batch. One solution to this issue would be to add a second CIP skid, just as we added another storage tank and filler earlier. Another solution would be to add flexible shifts to various operations. This would allow the software to determine better solutions and produce a tighter overall production schedule compared to our original solution. The use of flexible shifts is described in detail in the Schedule Pro manual. There are many other considerations when attempting to debottleneck a production schedule. For instance, it may be important to track raw material flows, labor constraints, production inventory, etc. Schedule Pro is designed to account for these types of scheduling constraints. For instance, Schedule Pro is equipped with a number of charts that allow you to see the consumption of materials and utilities, along with the production of products and waste. However, before these charts can be generated, the different inputs and outputs need to be declared during the recipe definition. Note that inventory charts can also be generated, and all charts can be linked to the schedule to view them simultaneously. In addition, Schedule Pro generates a number of reports that organize the results for you. The various reports that can be generated can be viewed through the Reports menu. Let's have a quick look at the Schedule report. Through this report, you can see the different procedures and operations for the batches and you can also see their scheduled start and end times. This concludes Part 3 of the Schedule Pro video tutorial series. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we will be posting other videos that will discuss more advanced concepts in detail. Also, remember to visit our website at www.intelligen.com where you can download more information on the tool. Thank you very much for your attention.